There we go. So the only way to really understand this one, you have the tongue. Tongue has to get in between the teeth. You got this, thigh, though, through, that thing, thigh, teeth, teeth. Notice how we're changing from a noun to a verb. When we go teeth, noun, teeth is now a verb. Bath is a noun. Bathe is a verb. Cloth is a noun. Clothe is actually a verb. And then breath is a noun. So this is a good example. I'm getting, I'm getting, I don't know what's going on here. I'm getting ready to mute everybody here. Hold on. Here we go. Mute everybody. Here it is. There you go, Jake. <laughs> you can just mute everybody. That's what, that's the funny thing about it. You can just, if, if you get background noise, <laughs> Gingy's like, yeah, go ahead, mute all the background stuff. Okay, here we go. So let, let's take a look at this one. All right, Rebecca, let's see what we can do with this one. Okay, so the, the main thing is when you say the TH, if you feel there's vibration in the vocal folds, for example, th th this, then it will be that, that ed sound. Now, if, if you say thigh, th th thigh, there's no vibration. It's more the theta. So annotate away. Go right ahead. Let's, I, I anticipate a lot of problems with this. So let's see what happens. And it's hard for non-native speakers to learn these sounds. It's hard for you to figure out how to represent them. But imagine if you're a child trying to learn these sounds or you're, or you're an adult learning English trying to learn these sounds. It is, these are tough. These are really hard sounds. And many languages don't even have this sound. It's almost rude. You're sticking your tongue out to say the sound. Th teeth. They're like, why are you sticking your tongue at me? Now, now wait a minute do, do the whole word too though do everything yeah let's do the whole thing not just the sound but the the word also so this thigh though through that the act that thing thy teeth Teeth, bath, bathe, cloth, breathe, breath. Yeah, go ahead and transcribe the whole the whole word with each of them. And I told you guys you get stressed out like me. The best thing I ran with my neighbor's dogs this morning. I feel a lot better. I ran with two golden doodles and a giant poodle. I ran with three, and that was nice. I gave them all hugs. I ran four miles with them. They all took a big dump up on the up on the hill and they got whatever. I brought them back. I go, I told my neighbor, I said, I'm three for three. Three for three is almost unheard of. You know, when you're walking a dog, if all three, I'll drop it at the same time. That's unheard of. That's like a almost like hitting a home run in baseball or something. But it, it gives a lot of satisfaction just walking, running with the dogs. It gets my mind off of all this turmoil. So we got teeth. Good. Now, wait a minute. Number one, it's not, not teeth, teeth, teeth. Yeah. Give me T E E teeth. Number three. Good. Bath. Bath. Good. Bath. That one was good. Cloth. Good. Claw. Oh, good. The open O. I can see that. Wow. Observant. Yeah, cloth, claw, cloth. You could probably say the open O with number five or the typewriter A. Either way, I can see the argument on that. Number two. Wait a minute. Number two. You got the, the. It's thigh, I, I, thigh, though, though. Throw. No, I would look at number three and number four with the vowel sound. Yeah. 
Yeah, Gingy. No. Yeah, good, good. This. 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 Good. Number one, teeth. Good. The T, little I, the theta. Number two, teeth. Perfect. Bath. Number three. Okay, these are looking good. We're getting there. Good. Number two, yeah, thigh, I, a diphthong. Number three, though, though. I would just say the the uh, eh, then the o. Oh. Yeah, there you go, right there. Yeah, though, o, oh, though. Number four, it's a ooh. It's through, ooh, through. Okay, we're almost there. Got a couple more to go here. Good. So we got the theta for four. We got the R. Now we need the vowel sound. Ooh. Through. Through. Ooh. Number seven, we have th, i, thing, thing, thing. Good. Three looks good. Throw. I wouldn't put that capital U in number three. I would just say though, though. Just the 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 ed and the o look is good enough. Okay. What do we got here? We're just about done. Good. This we might be able to get through the phonetics by the end of today's class. Yes. <laughs> So for number three, Professor, I take off that you just Yeah, 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 right. I would take okay. off that, yeah. Number four, somebody give me the ooh, ooh. There, thank you, Rebecca. Good. Yeah, through. Nice. Okay, let's check them so far. So we got this, thigh, though, through, that. We have thy, looks good. We have teeth. The little I, theta, we have teeth, which is good. Bath, we have bathe. Somebody got it. Wow, that's a tough one. Look at it. It totally changes from a verb to a noun. It just, that's weird how the language works. You got claw, cloth, cloth, or cloth, if you have typewriter A. You have breathe, breathe. We have breath. All right, so let me finish up number seven. We can move on. Remember, you, you got th, i, ng, thing, thing. You know this sound right there? Thing, thing. There you go, good. Yes. Thank you, Kylie. Kylie. Yeah, thing, th, thing. Perfect. Okay, we got it. Any questions on those? So remember, in, in some cases, we talked about characteristics of consonant sounds, right? So you have you have a state of the glottis, whether the sound is voiced or voiceless. You have where and then how there's some type of constriction in, in the vocal tract in producing the sound. In some cases, like these, these two sounds, the only difference is the glottis. They're, they're produced the same way. Uh, the constriction is in exactly the same location in the mouth. It's just one is voiced, the other is voiceless. That's it. That's the only thing that differentiates these. Okay, let's move on. That's good. Okay, let me double check just quickly. Let me look in the syllabus, make sure, see where we are here. Keep myself paced. Okay, what is it? Okay, phonetic transcription practice here. And then we have review for quiz one here. And opening up the first quiz, what a disaster that's going to be. I hate to even say it. But you're going to have some trouble with the lockdown browser or the quiz in general. But we have to do it. So I'm going to open it up. And we have a whole week. I'm going to give you a full seven days to complete it. And anybody who has trouble with your browser or whatever it might be, come by Durham office hours. We'll try to figure it out. 
not that I know anything about technology, really, I don't, but, but it just depends on your computer and what browser you're using and, and all that. So, okay, I got it. Professor, I have a question. Yes. Um, I think you mentioned last week that you were going to try to do like, like a mini quiz or just like something so we can like test out the lockdown browser. Are yeah, we still I, doing that? I should do that. I should do something like that this week. I'll see if I can set something up. Like just it's something like quick and easy to see if we can at least access it so we don't have to wait until the date of the quiz. Yeah, okay, that's a good idea. So you want to anticipate the problem before it happens. Yeah, like something okay. even as simple as like write your name on it just yeah. so we can like see. Okay, that's a good, good suggestion. I'll work on that. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That'll probably, and remember that if you have problems and you, you, you try to take the quiz and it doesn't work, it, it's not going to affect your grade. We'll figure it out. Trust me. If you have some problem, we will get to the bottom of it and figure it out. You, there's no way you're going to score lower because you can't take a quiz or a test. We will figure that out. So try not to stress out too much. There are certain things like acts of God, I call them uncontrollable situations that, that cause trouble. And we have to recognize these kinds of things. We, I mean, we, I mean, you, you got to think about it. This is the, this is the biggest, this whole pandemic thing. We haven't had anything like this since 1918. So it's been over 102 years. This is like a 100 year rare occurrence and it's happening to us right now. So that's, and you just have a lot of weird stuff with that. Okay, let's try this out. Let's see if we can figure this one out. These are some pretty fairly long, complicated words. Let me space these out a little bit more. See how much we can get. Okay, let's do one through five, 11, 11 through 15. Some, see if you can figure out what these words are in, in conventional spelling. I'll give you a tip with number one. You haven't done this activity in a long time, <laughs> if, if you know what the word is. The day I can do this, grab some popcorn, a drink, stroll down the aisle, watch my favorite movie. When are we going to do that again? Okay, look at number 11 again. Don't forget there's a D at the end. I'm just trying to figure out if it's a double B for robbed. <laughs> but it'd be robed if I have the other side. I think it's double B. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, good. Cinemax. Nice. Mississippi. Mississippi. M I W S I W S I W P I. Am I crooked S I crooked S I double P I? Yeah, Mississippi. Mississippi. Midwest freeway. Midwest is pretty easy. You can just about see the word. Yeah, the longer words can be easy, like kindergarten, robbed. No, wait a minute. Look at number five. You put rot, but the last, yeah, there. Let's see. Good, Roth, Roth. We have ridiculous, Mississippi, blind, Cinemax, robbed, kindergarten, Midwest, freeway, and... Stir. See if we get this one. Chingy's going for it. I was wondering for number four. It says ridiculous. Um, for it said it has like a small eye. So I would think like, yeah, like instead of it would say like ridiculous, but it, because of the small eye and the, the first. 
in the beginning, well, it's more re. The small i is re. Re. You you can you can say it a bunch of different ways though, Brandon. You could say ridiculous. You could say ridiculous. If you say ra, it's more of a schwa. Yeah. There's probably a, a few different ways that you can actually pronounce it. Spinster. We got it. Okay. Number five. I can't remember with a yeah Roth. Is that with an R or with a WR? I'm trying to remember that. Mine's going blank right now. Cinema. The blinds, blinds threw me off. <laughs> no, that's right though. Blinds. Mm -hmm. Blinds. There's not really a D in there. I agree. Yeah. But when you're transcribing it, blinds, Mississippi, ridiculous, Roth, robbed, kindergarten, spinster, Midwest, and freeway. Any questions on those? Okay, let's let's check out the next group here, see how we can do. Let's see if we can get this whole thing done. I'll be happy when we get this this uh phonetics behind us it only gets easier but michael this is tearing me up it's only like you know five or six percentage points you know when you look at the the first quiz so even if you get in the 60s or 70s remember you're just going to go up from here it's just going to get easier and easier as you go okay let's try these six through ten uh, and then 16 through 20, let's go ahead and try and, and write these back into conventional spelling. There we go, Anthony. Oh, automobile. Yeah, that, that number six is a little bit tough. Dense, density. density. You know what? I, I can see how you might argue on this one. It could be my transcription's a little off. Maybe that that instead of that little I after the S, it's more of a schwa sound. Density. Density. So it's probably not density. Densa. Density. Huskies. I felt sad this morning. I was running with my neighbor's golden doodles, but then my other neighbor's husky saw me running with the other dogs. I think they got jealous, but they just stared. They could see me running up on the hill. The huskies were just facing, just just watching every step. So I have I to have go. a husky. They're runners. Yeah, yeah. I know they I they. they <laughs> the problem is the three golden doodles, and each doodle is a hundred pounds. And the giant poodle is about 80, but those three dogs are much easier to run with than the two huskies. I'm not kidding you. And the huskies are only 50 pounds a piece. But they pull me to here to no man's land. It's, it, it puts so much pressure on my, uh, my uh, waist. They, yeah, my husky, the first quarter mile, I'm, I'm being dragged until she gets a little tired. <laughs> it's I really, <laughs> it's tough. And those guys are really, really... They're great running dogs, though, but mm -hmm. uh, I, anybody within hearing my voice, though, I do not recommend anyone get Huskies unless mm -hmm. you're fairly athletic. It's not a good idea to get this kind of a breed unless you're prepared to run them, even if you run them on a bike or mm -hmm. and you really have to keep them uh, chained up or on a tether. You have to keep them in a fenced area, but that's no guarantee. And if they get mm -hmm. out, they could kill any cats in the neighborhood. Yeah. So they're just not, I would not recommend Huskies for most owners, period. Yeah, not a good idea. Doodles, the, the good thing about Huskies, if you get them, is my Huskies personally, they are just, before they died, they ran every day until the day they died. I ran 12, 13,000 miles with them. I never took, I took them to the vet one time. Mm -hmm. So they're real sturdy. They don't get sick a lot. They don't have a lot of conditions with their uh, hips or, you know, so generally it's a really good breed that way. They're very sturdy, husky, but they're really tough to control. So mm -hmm. that's the only problem. The doodles are very loyal. I can let a golden doodle, uh, I can let them, I can let them go and they go up on the hill and they take a dump and they'll come back to me. You let a husky go, they're in Moreno Valley in 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you may never see them again. Yeah, so that's the problem with the Huskies. But the Golden Doodles have a lot of health issues, so I don't know what to tell you. 
Uh, okay, let's see what we got. So we got density, insanity, democracy, superimpose, electricity, huskies, huskies, rosewood, mockingly, automobile, and fidelity. Exactly. Perfect. This is good. Fidelity. So, Professor, for the um, electricity, we don't hear that there's no K or sound or it's... I don't know why I feel like I, I no. Say wait a minute. I think I forgot to put that in there. Hold on. Let me see. No, E let no, there is a K. It's after that epsilon E there. It's E, it's little hey. I L epsilon E K, E lec, and then tricity. And then electrica, or you could probably even argue a schwa instead of that big I. There's a lot of variation. But no, there's there's a K in there. I forgot to put it in there. Automobile. But generally, those look, look pretty good there. Now, if you guys be patient when we have when we have a quiz. I don't know how this happened, but I'm teaching three sections of 3110. The the former chair, Sunny Hyun, boy, if you ever get a chance to take one of her classes, boy, you better take it. She's really, really good. Sunny Hyun, excellent. But she couldn't do a, a linguistics course, so I got sucked into doing three of them. Now, each of these courses has about uh, 43 students, 40 to 43. So that means it's going to bog me down when I grade those things. So don't expect your grades immediately. You, you should expect them in about five days. That to me, that would probably be pretty good, but don't expect them exactly the next class or anything. But what I'll do is I will work on them. I promise you, as soon as you complete a quiz or a test, I'll go in there. Blackboard stacks everything up for me. I'll just go in order and go down the list. And every day I'll go into my different courses and just grade as many as I can get. So expect about maybe a five day turnaround on any quiz or any test. And like I told you in the previous class if you if you feel like i scored you too harshly on something uh come by my office and talk to me let's let's go into blackboard we'll bring up the quiz we'll take a look at it and i'll probably give you some more partial points or maybe all points or something so don't be afraid to come talk to me about that it's it's not an exact science this is a you know this is a word with five sounds well you have a 15 point question well you gave me three why didn't you give me five i don't know how the heck do i know I mean, I, I try to make some kind of a reasonable guess as to how many points I want to give you based on how how accurate your transcription is, but it's not a perfect science. And the same thing when you do tree diagrams. It, it's, a, it's real messy in terms of scoring. So, But I'm, I'm pretty good. I'll, I'll usually error on your side, right? Most students, if they take in my classes, they'll tell you that. And especially during the pandemic, I, I, I will go out of my way to try to help you guys as much as I can. Okay, what else do we need to do here? Okay, let's see. So we got that done. Okay, this is good. Okay, good. Yes, we're just about to put this behind us. Nice. Let's get it behind us once and for all. It's always good to get the... Uh, I like to get the hard part done. I've heard people start with morphology, then they go to syntax, they go back to phonetics, but I'm like, no, I don't know about that. I've seen books organized like that, but I, I like to just go to the smallest individual kind of sounds and go from the sounds to then the word, from the word to the sentence, from the sentence to conversation, from conversation to then language acquisition, and then from there to dialects. I just kind of start with the, the little bitty smallest part of the language. By the end of the class, we're talking about dialects of American English, which is a really huge, huge kind of thing. So th that's the logic and how I did it. Okay, let's do one through seven, 11 through 17. You got an Anthony Scott Jones, buddy. What's going on? What's going on? All right. I like your background. What do you think of my bookcase? <laughs> <laughs> I like that's, your bookcase. Yeah, that's a background too. I'm just, I, you know what I forgot to put, I, I should have my Cal State background. I just forgot to do it. When I go to my office hours, sometimes I have different backgrounds. 
you know, it was really cool. And the, in the last semester, I had, uh, I was kind of playing some jokes on my students. So as I was teaching, I had a fog machine. So I turned, <laughs> I turned the fog machine on and they thought it was an illusion, but pretty soon you couldn't even see my face. It was just fog everywhere. <laughs> That's funny. I, I did it right around Halloween. <laughs> yeah, it was, and they couldn't see I was pushing the button, right? And they couldn't really hear it. They just saw all of a sudden all this smoke and smog started, or not smog, but the, the fog started to, to get in the camera lens. And OK, here we go. So we got washed. I have a quick question on that one I did. Is it more of a T sound? Compared it's, a, to it's a T. It's not a D. Yeah. It's washed, <laughs> washed. And in, in phonetics, we'll, in phonology, we'll find out why it's a T and not a D. That's what we'll talk about. Number two, radio. Three, swimming, fence, octopus, fire, carpet, student, breakfast, pavement, window, ocean. Ocean's 11, ocean's 12, ocean's 13. That stuff got so confusing, I quit watching it. But check out Octopussy, the James Bond movie called Octopussy from the 70s. That was a good movie. Uh, how about uh, Barn and Soccer? So see how we can do on these. Okay, now, Gingy, look at number one. So you got wash, which is good, right? But we still need to account for the grammatical it's word ending. So washed. T, but I can't, I erased the D, but I don't know how to go back in here and get that <laughs> to draw my T on. No, look at number 12. I don't think there's a syllabic. It's not brr. It's just br, br. You see that, Jake? It's just more brek, breakfast. As in break fast, right? Because you've been sleeping all night. And you haven't eaten anything for eight hours. Yeah, I was telling you guys about stress. You know, young adults are vulnerable to problems, right? Because of what's going on right now. Uh, one of my, not exactly my neighbor, but he lives about a mile away. He's like 23 years old. He likes to play ping pong. So I called him up. I go, hey, he, he goes to my church. I said, you want to play a few games of ping pong? So I went over to his house and played him in ping pong. It was good. I like to play ping pong. Uh, he was happy to interact with somebody. And we had the garage door open. You know, and we were keeping our social distance and, but it was fun. We, we played about four games of ping pong. I beat him four games straight. Because my Chinese students taught me to play ping pong years ago. So I'm actually, a, uh, I'm not going to say uh, advanced ping pong player, at least not by Chinese standards. I'll say intermediate, which means I can slam and backhand. I can spin. I can do a lot of cool things with a ping pong paddle, but it, when it comes down to playing somebody from from China who actually understands ping pong, I can't even get five points. Maybe five points out of twenty one if I'm lucky, because they they invented the game. They know how it, you know how to play it. We have got fifteen ocean ocean in in okay ocean breakfast 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 breakfast. You want to have breakfast, breakfast, okay. Breakfast, that's probably right. Yeah, we got student. Look at how similar the transcription looks like number 11 to the actual word. Wow. Maybe make, uh, who did a, whoever did 11, make it a little U, stu, student. It almost looks like a, a capital U there. Fire, fire. Fear. But when I look at when I look at number six, it almost looks like the word fear. Fear or fear. So I I think the er is in there, but we need to check the vowel sound in number six. Fi I fire. All right, Clarissa, what do you got up your sleeve here? Fence. Good. Perfect. Nice. Fence. P. 
pave, pave, pavement, pavement. There you go, Jake. Finish it off, buddy. Ment, ment, pavement, pavement, window, ocean, barn, bar, barn, sock, soccer. Okay, we're getting there. I have a question. Yes, go right ahead. Uh, for number six, fire, wouldn't it be F with the A, Y? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. It needs to have a diphthong in there. Yeah, right. It's fire, fire, fire. Saw, saw, soccer, soccer, maybe in some areas of the the uh, United States, it might, I would just say sock, sock, soccer with a typewriter A for number 17. Yeah, good, six, yeah, fire, fire. How does that, okay, let's take a look. We got one more. Well, somebody's doing 16. Let me look at, so we have wa, washed, good. So we have the ah, radi, radio, good. Wow, look at all those vowel sounds in there. Three, because there's three syllables. Radio, radio. That's another good movie, radio. You guys ever watch that one? Check out that movie. That's a good one. Really good movie with that. That one actor, crap, he was in Jerry Maguire. Who are we talking about? Cuba Gooding Jr. That guy, yeah, he was in radio. That was a good movie. You should check that one out. Swimming. Sw yeah, I couldn't think of his name. He got into some trouble recently, right? Something to do with sexual assault, or I didn't get the whole story on that, but, man, he's a great actor, really is. Uh, swimming. Sw swimming. Fence. Aw, octu, octopus, octa, octa, octopus, octopus. I'm, I wouldn't transcribe it exactly like that, but it's octopus, octopus. I would more octa, octa. That'd be a wedge. Well, I would make it the schwa because the stress syllable looks like is that oct octopus, octopus. I would make it a schwa, not the wedge. Octopus. And then octopus. No, I think the capital U is good there. Okay, you have fire. We have car, carpet, carpet. We have student. We have breakfast, breakfast. Breakfast, if you say fast, fat is a typewriter. No, the, the ash. You have pave, pavement. We have window, ocean, barn, barn, or er, barn. No, I don't think there, it's just the R. I don't think it's a syllabic R. Just barn, barn. You have sock, soccer. Okay, any questions on those? So barn is just barn spelled pretty much. Yeah, I don't think it needs a syllabic. It, it's only one syllable. So I don't think you need the syllabic R, just barn, barn, barn. Yeah, in the Northeast, they would say barn. They, they don't say car, they say ka. They don't say yard, they say yard. Pack the car in the yard and go drink your coffee in Boston. So they definitely have a different, a lot of those vowels can be tweaked from region to region. You'll get a lot of variability with vowel sounds, especially in unstressed syllables. Okay, that's it. For octopus, was that a typewriter A? Octopus or? No, I was making it a schwa. 
Oh, schwa, okay. Yeah, I think it's more of a schwa sound, octa, octopus. Uh, okay. And then maybe instead of the octopus, I would probably put typewriter A in the beginning. Ah, uh, oc, octopus, octopus. Yeah, okay. Um, could you, uh, so what, what sound does the schwa make? Because I don't think my notes are correct. Yeah, good question. Let me go to my notes here. Let me see here. Hold on. Let's go to the whiteboard. Okay. You think we'd be doing all this stuff on, <laughs> in our classes? Yeah, this stuff is, uh, well, you can kind of look at them in, in two ways, right? So you mm -hmm. have, you have uh, let's say, uh, Bill, uh, Bill, uh, ability right there right uh ability now if you look at the next word i'm going to give you a word among among so the first sound is the schwa and then the m among so this one occurs with the schwa and the wedge the only difference is is this is the stressed syllable mm -hmm. that's the only difference they're pretty much the same sound okay so they so differ they differentiate them phonetically in that the schwa occurs in unstressed syllables and then the wedge occurs only in stressed syllables. Okay. That's what, what you want to remember. Okay. So it's the uh sound? Yes, it's okay. the uh in both ways, yeah. Okay. And there's really not that much difference. There might be one or two millimeters of a difference in the tongue placement or something. And I'm okay. not like a pathologist, but the difference is so minor, you can't even really hear it. Okay. Okay, right, so the you. wedge is stressed then. Yes, okay. yes. That's why when you see this, this word here, right? I started off with the schwa, but then when I got to the stress syllable, I changed it to a wedge. But it's among, among. And of course, that gives us this word or this one is giving us ability. And then uh, that. inability, uh, why, like what, what sound is the flap? Oh, I forgot that? this, wait a minute. There, the flap is the T. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's more ability. Now, well, Michael, I say ability. If you say ability, then you don't use a flap, you're gonna oh, okay. use the T. Okay, that was what I was, I was Yeah, that's about. what you would do, yeah. Okay. You'd be surprised, though, when you're speaking 150 to 200 words a minute, Jake, mm -hmm. a, a lot of times you're using the flap just as much as I am. Mm -hmm. You'd okay. be surprised. I say mountain. I bet you, behind closed doors, talking to your friends, you don't <laughs> say mountain. You say mountain. Mm -hmm. And you don't say Batman. You say Batman. You use that glottal stop. Mm -hmm. Batman, mountain, hat rack. That's American English, right? Mm -hmm. That differentiates American English from, say, British English. They don't use the, the I think, the flap as much as we do. They don't use the, um, that, uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the uh, glottal stop. They don't use mm -hmm. that one as much as we do either. Yeah. So the flap, is it like a D sound? Or did you say? Yeah, it's a, it's a soft D, right? Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, let's see what else we need to do here. Hold on. Okay, so okay, you can look at the rest. You can look at the rest of those for. Okay, that's good enough. We did it. Hot diggity dog. That's it. Okay, now I need to talk a little bit next time when I, I'm going to do a review for the quiz, but I'm also going to get into a little bit about phonology. We do have one or two questions on the quiz relating to phonology. So I'm going to at least talk about phonology a little bit. So don't, don't be surprised if next time we get into some discussion about phonology. It is a little bit on the first quiz and you'll see phonetics and phonology and morphology on the first test. You will see that. And I think that's it for today. Any questions? Um. For when we're studying for the, the quiz, um, do you think we should mostly focus on the, like the transcription? Like, is it mostly transcription and then a couple of the definitions or 
or should we split it more evenly or, or what do you think? Um, hold on a minute. Okay. That's a good question. Let me, let me look in, let me go into Blackboard for just a minute and let me just double check okay. that first quiz. And I, I'm going to say the transcriptions. Okay. I, I like all that tedious stuff. I know it drives you crazy, but I, I actually like it. Let, let me, let me look at it here. Okay. The, the phonetics and phonology quiz. Now you can't see my screen, right? No. How many hands am I holding up? Uh, you're holding up two fingers. fingers. Okay, good. You can see. Okay, good. Okay, there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it right now. Let me see what we have. Okay, let's see. What's it doing to me? It's showing me one question at a time. Why did I do that? Wait a minute. I got to make a quick change. Okay, let me go back. Okay, edit test options. Okay, wait a minute. Present the entire test. Okay, this is better. Okay, now let me see. Okay, I'm looking at it right now. So we have, we have definitions are 10 points a piece. No, the the first the first transcription question is 15 points. So that's a big one. You have a question about phonology, that's a 15 point question. You have another another transcription question is 15 points, another one is 15. You have a definition 10, another transcription is 15. No, you got to do the transcriptions, boy. I'm telling you, that's going to be probably it it uh it looks like it's about I don't know, say at least 75% of your points have to do with either transcribing mm -hmm. using the IPA or taking word that's written in the IPA and writing it back into conventional English. Okay. So that's going to be a big, a big part of it. You, you can't pass this quiz without getting a lot of those phonetic questions. Correct. Okay. Yeah. If you have a lot of trouble with the IPA, it's going to sink you. I mean, I mean, when I say thank you, you could go as low as uh, I've had people go as low as 16 percent, 30 percent. I've had some really extremely low scores. So you need to get a good handle. You remember those note cards I told you about? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So, uh, yeah, if, if you want to get at least 75 percent or higher, you're going to have to have success writing things into the IPA. Now, of course, you want to get the definitions. I'll ask you what's a definition of phonetics or phonology. I might give you another question about what is what approach do linguists take, descriptive or prescriptive grammar, stuff like that. You have to say what well, we, we look at things descriptively as opposed to prescriptively. Yeah, we'll have a few questions like that here or there, but that's not going to save you. You're still going to have to answer those IPA questions. And, and I will go in there after it's graded and I will uh, offer some partial points on some of those questions. That's what I'm going to do personally to help you out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I have a quick question on things like if we're spelling for using the glottal stop, how that would be done. I'm not going to ask you when you're doing transcriptions using the IPA, I'm going to K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it super simple. The only symbols that you're going to be able to use are the ones on your keyboard. And the glottal stop is not one of them. Neither is the wedge. Neither is the theta. Neither is the F, the S, the Z, hat checks, the syllabic consonants. None of those. I won't, I won't ask you about any of those. But they will be transcribed that way. And you have to write them back into English. So you'll see the transcriptions and you'll see the IPA, but I won't ask you to write complicated symbols using the IPA. So that's, that's my approach. That's how I'm doing with, you know, I'm doing a test like this without doing it in person, but Michael, let's just do it by hand and, and I'll email you a JPEG image of it. I'm not going to get 120 different pictures sent to me. I don't want to do that. <laughs> It's going to be too complicated. I have a quick question too. You say the symbols are all on our keyboards. If we don't see that, or is it going to be on the test, like where we're how we've been drawing it out? 
Yeah, whatever you see on your keyboard, that's what you'll need to do when you're transcribing things into the IPA. You'll just be using your keyboard to do it. I don't see it on my keyboard. That's why I'm wondering. If that And that means you're not going to see that symbol. If, if you don't see it on your keyboard, you're not going to have to transcribe that. You know what I mean? So I could ask you meat. Meat is really easy to transcribe. It's the M, the little I, and the T. Be careful about capitalizing or not capitalizing. That'll kill your points. You, you see what I'm saying? So I'll keep it pretty simple that way. So expect on Thursday, what we'll do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to introduce some key points in phonology, introduce some important things there, maybe 15 minutes or something. Then we're going to go over and review the quiz and, and do that. And then I'll open it up for the next week. I'll open it up for about eight or nine days or something. Yeah. All right. So, Professor, I'm sorry, just to go over it again, we could take the quiz on our own and it does that surrounding. Yeah, thing. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've never done it before. So I was just a yeah. little confused. Yeah. Yeah. What it, it's called using the lockdown browser plus the respondents monitor which means that once you, you, you can only go in to take the quiz through the lockdown browser first. And the browser prevents you from going to other websites or doing any other things. Now, the, but the, the, the respondents monitor is a camera that it'll ask you maybe to show your ID. You, you might have to show me some notes. You might say, um, you might say, uh, I'm going to be writing down some notes on this paper. You can't see it with my, it's hard to move my background, but it, it'll ask you to kind of uh, show me your workspace and all those kinds of things. And then once you take the quiz, if there's a suspicious, it looks like you're looking all over, you're leaving, coming back and all that weird stuff, the, the monitor, the, the program is going to send me a message and it's going to red flag your quiz and say, there could be something weird going on here. You better watch the video. Basically, I'm going to have videos of all of your, your quizzes. As crazy as it sounds. And about how long do we have to take? To, to it depends quiz? on what, what, if it's a quiz or a test. The quiz is not that difficult. I don't know, maybe an hour would be the maximum. And most of you will finish in probably 15 to 30 minutes. Now, if it's a test, some of these tests in here are going to take some time because of the technicality of it. So I may give you a, you know, two or three hours for a test, especially if it involves a diagram, like a tree diagram. If it involves that, I'll give you double or triple time because it, it could take you 15 minutes to do one diagram just using your keyboard. You'll see what I mean when we get to that part of the class, but I'll give you more time than you need to finish it. And even if you have disabilities, uh, you, you should have enough time to finish whatever I'm throwing at you without too much difficulty. Professor, right. yeah. this is my first time using the lockdown browser. Do we have to download it beforehand or is it installed through Blackboard? Yeah, you'll have to. Let me see if I can find the link to it. I'll, have to, I'll, I'll, I'll post it maybe in the announcements or something. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. See you guys on Thursday then.